when I was just a little girl. I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. What will be, will be. When I was just a child in school, I asked my teacher, what should I try? Should I paint pictures? Should I sing songs? This was her wise reply. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours. When I grew up and fell in love, I asked my sweetheart, what lies ahead? Will we have rainbows day after day? Here's what my sweetheart said. Que sera, that song? I guess so. Then go on, whistle it. Whistle it as loud as you can. What lies ahead? Will we have rainbows day after day? Here's what my sweetheart said. Not ours to see. Que sera, sera. What will be, will be. Now I have children of my own. They ask their mother, What will I be? Will I be handsome? Will I be rich? I tell them tenderly. Que Future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. What will be, will be. One thousand. One thousand. Yes. One thousand. You've got more than your fair share. <laughs> wow. Um, no. <laughs> Looking for those gifts. What do you want us to do here? What do I want you to do? Someone gave me a dare before Christmas one year, that season where you're sort of going crazy with all of the lists of what you have to do and what you have to make and what you have to buy. Someone gave me a, a dare, can I write down a list of a thousand things that I loved? And as I started to write out this list, this crazy whim, I realized I'm really writing out a list of all of the gifts God has given to me. Jim mentioned earlier a bucket list of all the things we want to do. This really is the, a different kind of a list, a list of how is God making my life full right now, right where I am, that I don't have to go and do these other things, but I can experience blessings and grace what and did you write beauty. Down? What did you write oh, down? what did I write down? Little things, jam on toast. Uh, <laughs> a, a man, an old man, I actually was, I, I carried the gratitude journal right there in my purse. A when gratitude it, journal? That I was writing down, number one, number two, number three. The Bible says that God keeps a record of our pain that God writes those things, that he keeps a bottle of our tears. Could I go ahead and make a record of the graces, a record of the blessings, of the gifts? Simple things, an old man picking out a card in, in the 
grocery store. We talked There's about no the, 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 the way the shadow <laughs> falls across the, the porch. Yes, yes. Uh, Simple things. Really starting to slow down and wake up to the blessings and the beauty. If God is everywhere, beauty has to be everywhere. And it's really about not just gratitude and easy things, but that I believe that God takes the ugly things in our life and he transfigures them into beauty. That beauty other, the, from ashes. Beauty from ashes. And can I, can I look long enough to see the beauty in every situation that God is transfiguring. This is the good news, the gospel, moment by moment. Now, how do you transfer that gratitude mm. into, well, what did you say? The only words, because you're a writer, <laughs> a writer, New York Times <laughs> best-selling writer as of this week, official, the only words that matter to you are the ones you live. live. So we're observing, mm -hmm. we are uh, um, developing an attitude of gratitude. Yes, yes. But now, how then shall we live? The word came as flesh. We can't just read the Bible, we now have to take those words and live them out moment by moment. When you start to write out the things that you're grateful for, you realize you are perfectly loved. My life really is a story of a woman wounded, a woman anxious, a woman overwhelmed. But writing out a thousand ways that God loves me is realizing that I'm a woman wooed, that love changes me. Love is the only thing that can change us, and His perfect love casts out all fear. I don't have to be afraid of what comes, because He's going to use everything to transform me into the image of His Son. He is transfiguring me, too. And I think trust. Trust is this, can I go from the past to the future? And it's built with planks of thanks. If I can thank him for the past, like the Israelites did, always recounting the blessings. They trust his character. If we can trust him, trust who he, what he's done in the past and give thanks for the past, we can trust him for the future. We can cross that bridge from the known, all the ways that he's blessed us, to the unknown, the future that we don't know. The credibility, the track record is there. Yes. Now, it's a well-worn little quip, but you are the poster girl for Gratitude is the <laughs> attitude that determines the altitude in living. Now, somebody else used another word, and this is really kind of ironic. Um, <laughs> excuse the little well-worn show and tell here, but some people reading and listening mm. to Anne have um, used the word Pollyanna. Yep. <laughs> and I discovered uh, just a couple of weeks ago that a friend of my age uh, did not know what I meant when I said a Pollyanna. And then I said, you mean you haven't seen the movie, Pollyanna? So this was just returned to me yesterday. This is the Disney movie with Haley Mills. She played the glad game. The glad game. But you know, when you think about Jesus, what does he do when he's facing the worst possible, the cross? He takes the bread and he gives thanks. That's much more than Pollyanna. That's the, that's the demons. That's the dark. That's the worst thing. And that giving thanks taking what the bread really of pain, of suffering, and believing that God is going to use it for good. I call it Eucharisteo. That's what that word is in Greek. Gave thanks, Eucharisteo. Eucharisteo, give thanks, but in that word, charis, grace, and kara, joy. Mm. So if I can take everything as grace and give thanks for it, there is joy. And I think that's so much more than Pollyanna. Can I believe in Eucharisteo and live the way Jesus did, giving thanks because he knows the heart of God is for him, never against him. Interesting. And he, he suffered leaving us an example yes. that we should follow yes. him. We, we need to expect, you know who was in this studio yesterday? Mm. Dr. Helen Rosevere. Mm. That name won't yes. be familiar to many. She's coming. But this is the message of her life. Mm -hmm. Can you trust God? Can you trust His character and His heart is for you to transform everything into good? Now, I, I really don't know how this works out in your real everyday oh, life. My real Anne. everyday life has that journal sitting right at my counter. It stays there permanently. So when I feel totally overwhelmed, we start, where can I see the blessings right now in this moment? My kids actually hear me talk to myself. Yes, Lord, I am thankful for. <laughs> and I start giving thanks right in the midst because that puts, brings me enter into his courts with thanksgiving in our hearts. So if I can give thanks, I know God is here. He is blessing. He is a fountain of grace. Great modeling. Um, 
But six out of ten <laughs> Christians mm. uh, say that busyness mm -hmm. is an obstacle to their relationship mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. Never mind six <laughs> children and homeschooling. You have time somehow to go to Guatemala mm. with Compassion mm. International. Yes. We yeah. have some beautiful pictures. Who does the cooking and teaching when you're traveling? Uh, my mom is fantastic. Oh, right. <laughs> and so is my mom. husband. So is my husband. Yes. Where are you here? Uh, we went to a Compassion Center. So all of Compassion is um, works out of churches. So we were at a church center where Compassion feeds over 100 children twice a week. Wonderful. Mm, Guatemala. Love this ministry. Side of the hill and going into homes. Yes, praying with our sponsored child. I, we, as a family, we sponsor Zimora and praying with her mom and dad and the compassion workers. Ah, meeting Zimora. That was our first moment of meeting and uh, so grateful. What an amazing moment in my life. How often do you go? Um, that was my first trip with compassion. And I think, you know, when you realize how blessed we are, when you've written out literally a thousand things more than that you're grateful for. You, you figure I'm drinking from yeah. my saucer because well, my cup is overflowed. You want to give. It. You want to give. That the gifts that he gives us aren't meant, they always stay a gift. They're meant to be given. So when you have so much, you realize I need to pour out too. You know, that's what this book uh, is really the result of. Mm -hmm. Six years of blogging. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, is it a holy experience a holy com. com. And I started to blog these a thousand gifts and other women said, you know what? I want to try that too. I want to take the dare. And emails all of the time. Women say, this is changing my life because I'm starting to see and experience God the way he's blessing me right now in ways I was blind to. Because honestly, our default is discontentment. Mm -hmm. It's ingratitude right there in the garden. That was Satan, not content. That's our default. And, and hey, not to label you total Pollyanna, oh. you still have sometimes a struggle with negativity. Being here is difficult. Fear. Can I trust him? But you can't simultaneously feel fear and give thanks at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I have to I have to fight every day for joy. My default is not to give thanks. It is intentional. And he says in everything to give thanks. It's a command. Why does he do that? Because there is joy in that. And look where it's taken you. Well, only and by look grace. What brought to us. Only How many by people grace. on that blog? Oh, I Come never on. go to numbers because in numbers, I think, am I David taking my census? Well, God does whatever God wants to do. But yes, there's a lot of us there all giving 40 thanks. 50,000 <laughs> readers a week around the world every month. Mm -hmm. 40 to 50,000. I can say it. I can say it. And your, your sanctification is fine. <laughs> 40 to 50,000 readers a week mm -hmm. around the world, a ministry from a farmhouse mm -hmm. in Gowan's Town. Only God could do something Gowan's so crazy. Town. It's near Listowel, <laughs> right? Near Listowel, yeah. Well, I hope you've been warmed up for the challenge. A dare to live fully right where you are. Yes. And you've heard the illustrations mm. of simple gratitude. Well, God loves that mm. when we have a thankful heart. And if we would start there, we would begin to see all that God is waiting to do in and through our lives. Planning big things for us because he wants to make us like Jesus.